The Padres bring one of baseball's best players to San Diego in a historic trade. All the details coming right up. San Diego County has declared a public health emergency when it comes to monkeypox, what that means for our community. We're learning more about the house where a teenager says she was raped by San Diego State football players. The growing efforts from neighbors to preserve buildings in Kensington, we explain coming up. And it's the Escondido home where Elvis never leaves the building, the Heartbreak Hotel. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. A huge day for the Padres and the Friar Faithful. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anna Laurel. I'm Jesse Pagan. Carlo and Marcella are off. MLB All-Star Juan Soto is coming to San Diego in what could be the biggest deal of the trade deadline. Padres fans are excited over the thought of the 23-year-old teaming up with Fernando Tatis Jr. and Manny Machado. CBS 8's John Howard is live at Petco Park for us tonight. And John, you've got more details for us behind this blockbuster deal. Yeah, it's a blockbuster deal. One of the biggest trades in Padres history. Some are calling it one of the biggest trades in Major League history. That's for all the pundits to fit, sit and talk about, but I got to say it is one of the biggest deals in Padres history, and no one attacked the trading deadline like A.J. Preller and the Chargers. Coming in, Juan Soto and Josh Bell of the Washington Nationals. Soto is a generational player, just 23 years old, and on con uh, under contract for the end of this year and the next two years. It's basically like getting another Fernando Tatis Jr., only it seems Juan Soto is more available than Fernando, as Fernando constantly seems to be hurt. Uh, Josh Bell, a first baseman, having a rock-solid season for the Washington Nationals. Eric Hosmer is now gone and off the Padres. He's been sent to the Boston Red Sox in exchange for a pitching prospect. As for the Padres players today after the game, they were thrilled about the trade. You know, obviously adding players like, like we did today is... You know, it's really amazing and, you know, seeing what our GM has done uh, the last three days, um, something that's really brave and he's putting the, he's putting the chips together to, so we can roll. Obviously, uh, Juan's a generational player, um, superstar, uh, and Josh is really, really good well playing against those guys the last couple of years. Uh, you know, can't wait to have him in the clubhouse here. Obviously, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help us a lot. You know, we... We're going to be even, even better, better team. And the Padres also got a Cincinnati Red by the name of Brandon Jewelry. Good utility player, infielder, outfielder. Again, the Padres attack this trade deadline, and it's really bolstering the forces for the final two months of the season and hopefully a deep playoff run. And and Jesse, let's go back to you now. Now, John, the leadership here is uh, assembling the Power Rangers. Do you think that's going to be enough for the Padres to overtake the Dodgers for the division championship? Uh, good question. Right now, the, the Dodgers have a 12-game lead on the Padres. And as it turns out, the Padres and Dodgers play each other 12 more times the rest of the year. Now, I don't think the Padres are going to shut out the, uh, the Dodgers 12 straight games. However, I, I think they're going to pull to within single digits, maybe finish the season two, three games out of first place. I don't know if there's enough baseball season left for the Padres to overcome the Dodgers 12 game lead only because the Dodgers are going to continue to win as well. But for Pete's sake, a wild card spot is all but locked up. And then who knows what happens when the team starts playing hot in the postseason. Yeah, that's what we're waiting, anxiously anticipating to see. John Howard, thanks so much live for us at Petco Park tonight. Our county has taken uh, the issue of monkeypox very seriously from the beginning, and those efforts will certainly continue uh, in light of, uh, of what we are continuing to see moving forward. Tonight, San Diego County is officially under a local health emergency from monkeypox. The announcement follows a similar move by the state yesterday. CBS 8's Steve Price explains what this means and has the latest numbers from the county. Local leaders say there have been 27 confirmed monkeypox cases here in our county, and they've listed another 19 as probable. By declaring a public health emergency, San Diego County can tap into more resources, theoretically getting the monkeypox vaccine out into the community quicker. 
This action will allow availability of personnel, such as pharmacists and EMTs, to also administer vaccines. Dr. Wooten says there's been one hospitalization so far and no deaths. County leaders say it's important to take this seriously, but they don't expect it to be even close to as crippling to our community as COVID. This situation that we face today is fundamentally different than the one that we faced in COVID and that there already is a vaccine, there is treatment, uh, and we know much more about it. Monkeypox is typically spread through skin to skin contact and can cause lesions that resemble blisters or pimples. It can also come with flu like symptoms. Fever, chills, headache, muscle aches, or swollen lymph nodes. Across the country, monkeypox has disproportionately impacted the LGBTQ community, and local leaders confirm they are seeing the same trend here. But county leaders are quick to point out that it can spread to others and that it's important not to stigmatize any individual or community. I would like to be clear that this disease is not caused in any way by the LGBTQ community. This disease can and has occurred in individuals outside of this community, including children, pregnant individuals, and those that are immunocompromised. That said, Mayor Gloria says he's spoken with agencies that work with high-risk individuals, and it's clear the LGBTQ community is taking monkeypox very seriously. This community understands and it has experienced uh, outbreaks uh, of viruses uh, in the past. We have seen this before, uh, and we've learned those lessons, and we've taken it very seriously. I want the community to know that the government is taking this seriously as well. The county has already received almost 4,000 monkeypox vaccines and administered nearly 2,500. They are hoping more vaccines will be arriving soon. Steve Price, CBS 8. Thank you, Steve. Right now, an investigation is underway into a fire at a family-owned business in National City. It happened at the Western Hose and Gasket building on Harding Avenue and 30th Street. The fire broke out around 11 last night and crews from National City, Chula Vista, San Diego and Benito all fighting it. We still don't know the cause. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Four people are now confirmed dead in the McKinney fire in Northern California. That wildfire is now more than 56,000 acres or about 88 square miles. More than 100 homes and outbuildings have burned since it broke out Friday near the border with Oregon. Right now, there's no containment and that fire can also be seen from space. Look at this. These images are from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. This is California's largest wildfire this year. National weather forecasts also show how the smoke is drifting toward the central part of the U.S. We are learning more about the house where a teenage girl says several San Diego State football players raped her last year. Neighbors say the partying on the street is out of control. And as CBS 8's David Gofferton reports, cell phone video shows a history of students partying in the neighborhood. You can hear the party noise from out on the street. In this cell phone video recorded by a CBS 8 producer in August 2020, one year before this same off-campus house was the scene of an alleged rape by several San Diego State football players. At the time the video was shot, CBS 8 was documenting parties in the area because neighbors were complaining about San Diego State students out of control. This is what happens on every weekend in this neighborhood. A neighbor who spoke to us on the condition that she not be identified says she recorded this cell phone video last year, just down the street from the house on the exact same night the alleged rape took place, October 16th, 2021. There was a party behind us that was broken up by SDPD at about 10 p.m. and the students all walked around the corner over to here and there then became like a mob and they wouldn't leave. They were looking for something to do. The neighbor told me after police broke up the first party, students started walking down the street toward the house where the football players were partying. And in fact, the alleged rape victim confirmed to CBS 8 she had been drinking at a different party in the area before leaving that party and walking down the street to the house where the alleged assault took place. I arrived at the party. I had already been drinking with the friends that I arrived there with. I was already very intoxicated. 
The teenager or her friends are not seen in the video shot that night by the neighbor down the street, but the neighbor was heartbroken to hear the then 17-year-old girl may have been raped in a bedroom by several San Diego State students. I was absolutely sick to think I was standing out there when that was happening. I absolutely sicked my stomach. Just completely sad for that young woman. The house in question is owned by an LLC. We reached out to the owner but did not get a response. The neighbor says she has complained about the parties for years, but nothing changes. It's absolutely horrible. We hear girls constantly screaming for help. We need help out here. It, it's chaos. Now, the San Diego Police Department does have a program in place, a zero tolerance program called CAP, whereby properties that have underage drinking and wild parties can get red flagged and fined $1,000. I reached out to San Diego Police Department today and told, they told me that this house in particular has not been flagged under the CAP program. Now, David, you've been covering this for a while. What is happening with the investigation into the alleged rape itself? I'm sorry, I'm uh, having some problems hearing your question, but uh, uh, San Diego Police Department tells me uh, that the investigation is ongoing, but the case has not been turned over to the district attorney's office. Now, San Diego State is doing their own investigation aimed primarily at improving policies to keep their students safe. All right, David Gofferton following this step-by-step -step for us tonight. David, thank you.